What's going on guys? Troy here, Superhuman You, and in today's video, I'm kicking it next to the greatest announcer of all time, right outside the Staples Center, home of the Los Angeles Lakers. And what we're gonna get into today is how do celebrities transform so fast? How do they get so ripped? How do they gain size? How do they just transform so fast? It seems like you see these pictures of like these three, four month celebrity transformations and you're probably thinking, how in the world does that happen? Well, I have a lot of experience out here in Los Angeles. I actually pursued acting for about a year out here. A, a few years back, I have close friends who are celebrity transformation coaches who actually work with mainstream actors and I'm gonna give you guys the real deal in this video. I'm not gonna hold back. I'm gonna tell you the three things that all of these celebrity transformations have in common and precisely what they do. So. Got a bunch of notes here I'm gonna go into and I'm gonna break down if you can achieve the physique that Thor has, that Wolverine has, that, um, what else, who else am I gonna cover? Chris Evans, Tom Hardy, and Christian Bale. Can you achieve these physiques naturally? I'm actually gonna break down their exact physique that you saw in the movie when they're at their most impressive state, break down the fat-free mass index and if it's achievable naturally or not, and also give you the top three hacks that all of these transformations have in common. You ain't got no gains. You ain't got no weights. <laughs> idea if you can achieve a physique naturally or not we're gonna utilize something called the fat free mass index in this video so we're gonna give each one of these five celebrity transformations their exact fat free mass index number and we're gonna show you how it rates on the scale you guys can do the same thing at home down these five celebrity FFMIs, then I'm gonna dive into the three things that every single one of them have in common. So the first victim is none other than Chris Evans, AKA Captain America. Now he is six foot, 194 pounds, approximately 12% body fat at the time of filming Captain America. And he falls on the FFMI scale of 23.5. Now this puts him in the category of being genetically excellent, but Chris had already worked out for about five years, hardcore, before even filming Captain America. So you 100% could achieve his, his physique naturally, and we're gonna get into exactly what he did in just a second. Next one is Hugh Jackman, AKA Wolverine. I would say he has the closest physique and FFMI to me at least, as far as like visually how he looks. Six foot two, so he's taller, 181 pounds, 8% body fat, putting him at an FFMI of 22. Now, that puts him in the category of being genetically excellent, and this is very achievable naturally. I mean, the genetic limit for FFMI goes all the way up to 24.5. Obviously, he's very lean, so he looks very impressive, but 100% that you could achieve the physique that Hugh Jackman has naturally, and make sure you pay very close attention to the three things that all these celebrity transformations have in common, because the very first one that I'm gonna cover I've seen so many interviews. He is so on point with this first thing. So make sure you guys pay close attention to that. And we're gonna get into the next victim, which is gonna be Thor. Now, the thing about Thor is he has a very aesthetic physique. He's taller and longer, which just makes you look more aesthetic when you have your muscle proportions filled out accordingly, which obviously he does. He's on point with that. Now, Thor is six foot three, 200 pounds, 10% body fat, and that puts him at an FFMI of 22.6. So he's right on the border of genetically excellent and like a genetic freak, but still within the natural limits. Next up is one of my personal favorite actors of all time, Christian Bale. We're gonna break down his physique in Batman Begins. So Christian Bale, six foot, 200 pounds, 12% body fat, with an FFMI of 24, which puts him very close to the top of the genetic limit. Now, the thing about Christian Bale is he had worked out for about five years in the gym before Batman Begins. It was rumored that Christian Bale worked out for the movie American Psycho uh, six times per week for three hours per workout session. So the guy is an extremely hard worker and just looking at him visually, I 100% believe that you could achieve his physique naturally. In fact, if you just look at his physique compared to uh, like even many like guys who take 
bodybuilding and fitness very seriously, he looks very similar to them, like how they look within their first three to four years of training. So Christian Bale's physique is 100% achievable. He's not super lean, he just has like all the muscle bellies in his chest, his shoulders and his arms filled out. But as you're about to see when we get into the three things, that was 100% on purpose and to make him look more aesthetic and powerful for his movie role. Last but not least, we got Tom Hardy, AKA Mr. Trap. So his stats for the movie, uh, not the movie Bane, the movie Batman where he plays Bane and also the movie Warrior, five foot nine, 180 pounds, approximately 12% body fat, putting him at an FFMI of 23.6, which would be genetically excellent. Now, the thing that really stands out about him are those traps. Now, I've covered this in other videos. This could be a combination of many different things. It's been rumored that he did a ton of shrug work back when he was in high school or college. I think he was a former athlete. And I've covered the overtraining principle in my results of doing push-ups every day video, how even on my physique, like I don't even care about having a big chest. I just accidentally got a really big chest by overtraining it at a young age. So his big traps could be the result of overtraining at a young age. It could just be genetic. Like everybody has different muscle bellies and insertions. So when you look at his physique, like his traps really stand out, his chest stands out. I think this is probably genetic because his FFMI is right within the range of natural and he doesn't look anything like a bodybuilder or a professional fitness model. So now that we covered these five celebrity transformations, I'm so excited. This is the good stuff right here we're gonna get into the three things that every single one of these transformations have in common so let's get into the good stuff here now the three things that all of these transformations have in common and I studied every single one of these transformations I talked to a few of my friends who are celebrity transformation coaches it's really it's crazy they're all doing the exact same thing or relatively like they fall within the same range of workout structure and that is they're working out for aesthetics I cannot tell you I get so many DMS on my Instagram from you guys and I'm asking you what you're doing what your workout plan is what your workout structure is and like 99% of you guys are not working out properly for aesthetics so the main aesthetic muscle groups are gonna be obviously getting that V taper so you want to have six-pack abs you want to be relatively lean you want to have chest the shoulders the biceps develop most of you guys aren't working out to develop your aesthetic muscle groups now these guys are on a very structured and intense program to only focus on aesthetics so I can promise you most of them are not going in the gym and doing like powerlifting routines they're not going in the gym and wasting their time and then on top of doing the lifts that give them the best aesthetics possible they have intensity and short rest times built in they have forms of Tabata and high intensity interval training built in so pretty much all these celebrity transformations happen with a combination of uh, very intense weight room work with short rest times which I talked about in a few other videos recently and Tabata style training in fact I was looking at Thor's exact routine he would go in the gym for about two and a half hours he would do really intense compound work and then half the time to end the workout he would do Tabata style training incorporating kettlebells and plyometrics uh, doing some sprint work so I cannot tell you enough Adding intensity and structure to your workouts is a game changer. Um, you guys need to be on some type of program. If there's ever a day when you're walking in the gym and you don't have it planned out and premeditated, you're wasting your time, guys. I, even like me, I have 10 years of experience. I went to a training academy that trained NBA and NFL players. I know every single workout and exercise tactic in the book. But when I step foot in the gym and I have no plan, I don't have that shit written down on my workout journal, I have terrible workouts. So literally, I don't care whether you follow the Science of Abs program or my program or some other program. I just want you guys to have a plan of attack and make sure it's gonna help you guys sculpt an aesthetic physique. And the biggest takeaway is all of these guys, you can transform so quickly if you incorporate compound exercises with short rest times and also do high intensity interval training, AKA Tabata style training, because as we're gonna get into uh, number two, this is gonna maximize your hormones, both muscle building and fat loss. And it's just, it's such a game changer, guys. So compound exercises, short rest time, Tabata training, high intensity interval training, have a plan of attack every single time you walk in the gym and you guys are gonna transform at the speed of sound. The second thing that these transformations have in common is, and I'm gonna get so many comments, Oh, they just take steroids. No, they don't, guys. We've already covered the FFMI. And the thing, the thing that you guys don't understand, these guys are movie stars. So the second thing is HGH, human growth hormone. Now, do some of these celebrities and movie stars take human growth hormone? 
possibly, but it's not a crazy muscle building and like get huge type of drug. And the thing that all of their training and diets have in common is they are so on point to maximize their human growth hormone. So I got some notes here on my phone. Um, as you guys know, I'm doing daily uploads, so I didn't have time to memorize all this, but I took some notes on exactly what they did with their trainers, their diets, their training structures, and it correlates into maximum human growth hormone production. And the crazy thing about HGH is it's not necessarily like, so obviously like injecting human growth hormone costs tens of thousands of dollars per year. They obviously have the money to do it. But the way that they eat and the way that they sleep and supplement, it's also gonna maximize. And the crazy thing is, you guys can do this at home. You guys can do the exact same regimen and have really high human growth hormone levels. I'm gonna tell you exactly how. Number three, you guys are, some of you guys, I love most of you guys, some of you guys are pissing me off so much in the comments. You don't realize like how hard I've worked, how hard some people have worked to achieve their physiques. Let me ask you this, anyone who thinks that there's a shortcut to getting a great physique, have you ever tracked your macros and ate clean for one week straight, literally just one week, let alone three months, six months, the majority of the last five years? Guess what, these celebrities, they have their diets meticulously planned out. They have every single meal meticulously planned out. Their macros are on point. Every single one of their meals is prepared for them. Imagine if you woke up and you knew exactly how many macros you had to eat to look a certain way and you did that every single day for three months. Now three months doesn't sound like a very long period of time but when you think about it, 90 straight days of eating flawlessly how fast could your physique change? Just imagine that, 90 straight days. If you woke up for 90 straight days in a row and you went to the gym on a super structured program and you did the exact type of cardio, the exact type of weight room work to build the aesthetic muscle groups, you had your diet perfectly on point, you had your supplementation on point, you had your sleep on point, you weren't stressed out, you woke up motivated and excited for your workouts, excited to eat clean. How fast would you transform? Guess what? That's all these celebrities are doing. And it's no wonder that the type of work ethic that it took to become a famous movie star, it's no wonder that it's easy for them to apply this to the gym. And that's what I love about fitness and transformation stuff and just being able to really push yourself and achieve a great physique naturally is it really tests you mentally and physically. It helps you uh, become basically the best version of yourself. And that's why number three is just following a very structured plan of attack with your diet. So I can't recommend enough. You guys gotta know your macros. You got to at least hit those weekly averages and you have to have have a plan of attack do not wake up there should be not a day that goes by that you wake up and you don't know that the macros at least approximately that you need to hit for either your lean bulking or your fat loss goals so hopefully this little clip kind of uh, lit a fire under some of you guys but you guys can achieve an incredible transformation if you follow the three rules that all these celebrities do. So make sure that your workout is on point, make sure that your diet is on point, and make sure that you know your sleep, your supplementation, all that stuff is on point, and you guys can achieve an incredible transformation as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm signing off from downtown LA. See you guys on the video tomorrow.